Um, Vouch. Let's listen to some Vouch, if you can. So, wait, does this not? Oh, it leaked. Oh, that doesn't work. Right. There's not much I can do about the optics black hole, though, at least not right away. I don't expect this video will get much positive attention on release. I, I think it's going to be kind of broadly ridiculed, largely, I think, from folks trashing it who haven't actually watched it. This is something that I expect. This is something we all know will happen. Whether or not you agree with me on any of this, you know that'll happen. It's unfortunate, but I, I can't make that not happen. I can't, like, rewrite reality, so... If I can't do that, then I just have to accept it. And I'm sure there will be like drama YouTubers who 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 comb over it and pause every two seconds to talk about the like pedophilic contour of my frontal lobe or whatever. You know, they'll just make a big laugh riot out of it. The I watched the entire video. I watched Vouch. Vouch put out a I should say Vouch put out a one hour and fifty minute long response video. As a result of the uh, Goblin fiasco, uh, the tax folder expose, and I watched all of it. I watched it on 2x, but Vouch speaks kind of slow and deliberately, so I didn't really miss out on too much. I will say this. I'll start with the positives. Um, Vouch was good to groom himself. As you can see, his beard is freshly uh, sheared. Um, his hair is did, he's got this nice dark leather jacket on, which kind of looks like the kind of, um, leather, uh, jeans, jean jacket on that, um, Wrangle star tries to wear, you know, he's kind of like, I'm an everyday man. I wear a, a jean jacket, like, um, like Wrangle star. I, I, I bought a jacket that'll last me 90 years, just like in Soviet Russia. So. He was good to take a bath and do his hair and buy a nice jacket from Ringstar. That that's a good part. That's a good job. Um, the second one is he constructs this video in a way that is very intelligent. He puts his strongest arguments first. So he digs up all those old clips of him where he's like making really dipshit debate bro arguments in favor, trying to um, associate no ethical consumption under capitalism with child pornography. Though, sorry. The one argument he doesn't make, which is surprising me because it seems, it, it seems like it's the most obvious refutation of what he says, is that the child exploitation is incidental to the product. If there was a way to have a robot go out and find diamonds in, in the river, uh, then they probably wasn't, wouldn't use children. You know, if there was a faster, easier, cheaper way to acquire the product, then they, the children would be excluded from the, the equation because they're not necessary. Whereas the purpose in and of both the production and the consumption of child pornography is the abuse of the child. For some reason, literally no one ever brings this up as a, as a refutation of what he says, even though it's like the most obvious point to make. Um, so he, he starts out, he, he says that his argument was retarded. He regrets it. It's haunted him every day of his life. He wishes he could go back and shoot himself in the past because uh, he's really, he acknowledges that that clip seriously damaged his long-term prospects probably for the rest of his life. Um, he kind of malingers that it's been five years, but I can tell you, bro, it doesn't matter when, how old you were when you, when you said dumb shit, uh, it can be 16 years later. Uh, people bring it up all the fucking time. So you get used to it. It's never going away, bro. Um, then he moves on from that. And then at the very end of his video, he gets to the, the goblin folder. He gets to the goblin folder. And um, it's kind of weird because at the start, I, I went to, to lengths to explain. Very well spoken, very deliberate, very uh, sounds very reasonable, going over his mistakes, admitting that they're mistakes, wishing that he did things differently, so on and so forth. Uh, it's worth mentioning that because when he gets to the tax goblin folder, um, that that deliberateness kind of breaks because now it's not trying to 
debate bro his his own perspectives now it's like why do you have pictures of lollycon save your computer so he has to be kind of silly about this and he goes well i thought they were short stack goblins and i like the tummies and now i can totally see with the context that i that that was a mistake and i shouldn't have done that but one thing he doesn't mention is the horses uh in this segment where he's discussing the lollycon folder he does not mention that there are lollycons being fucked by horses his explanation is that um he likes small girls because it makes his pp look bigger he likes it when there's a big dick and then a small body and because that that's arousing to him and i assume that that goes double for horse cock but he does explicit it specifically doesn't mention horses i was actually um actually by some youtuber who says i i watched it too and that the oh it was um the guy from what's the, what's the name of that podcast he's like a he has a weird name it's like oyasan or something and i want to say it's the podcast that charlie was on there's one there's a very big, very big podcast and it has a fourth chair that's a guy that likes the kiwi farms and i swear that charlie's on it kaya orson he i'm um, actually me on twitter and he said um that i was wrong that the horses are brought up but no actually so in the tax folder he doesn't mention the the horse fucking the little girl he he completely uh deliberately misses that but in the end he does use the word horse he he talks about horses only in this context because there's that really famous quote from keffels where keffels says valsh is a racist pedophile and that's why we love him and uh, that quote is really damaging to both valsh and keffels and it's apparently an end joke in the the Valsh community to just call him a racist pedophile. And the horse stuff is only brought up in the context of him saying, look, please stop calling me a racist pedophile as a term of endearment. It's actually not helpful at all. And it really bothers me. And I've just been too much of a bitch to say anything about it for five years. Uh, please stop. And then um, he, as a counterpoint, he says, but you can call me a horse fucker. You can call me a horse fucker. You can say that I love horse cock. That's all fine. So it's like, the, it's not, he doesn't mention it. And he doesn't mention why the horses are fucking little girls in the tax folder segment. But at the very end where he's talking about um, his own community as like an address to the people that, that actually consume his content, he pleads with them to call him a horse fucker that loves horse cock instead of a pedophile racist. And if it sounds like anything that I've said is a joke, um, that is a true and accurate summary of the video and anyone else who's watched it can back me up on this that I'm, I'm not making shit up uh, so <laughs> uh, That is the Vouch video and now the Vouch shit almost seems like a an a side note to the real drama, which is uh, Queen Kafal's. Oh, oh god. I meant to show you this. It's very uh, it's very important that he got his beard groomed because without his beard, that's what he looks like. Can you fucking believe that? Can you believe that that's what he looks like without his? I, I, a little part of me says that's that's not him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a part of me is saying like, there's no way that's him. You know what really really reminds me of is um, this guy, the the actually Zoe Fox guy. Oh wait wait, let me not show this on screen before I check it. Hold up a second. Yeah, this guy. The the I stand by Kiro the Wolf guy. Let me see if I can find a picture of him. Oh, this works fine. Look, does he not? And this guy, this guy looks like a, a pedophile furry version of Rich Evans. And then uh, Valish looks like him. So in a way, Valish is kind of a bread tube version of Rich Evans, if you really think about it. You know what I mean? So this guy looks a lot closer to Rich Evans than, than Vouch does. Anyways, that's just an aside. Um, after the Vouch stuff started bringing attention to Kefal, Kefal then stabbed Vouch in the back. And he says, I've changed my position on everything, honestly. Fuck Vouch. 
he deserves far more criticism for all of this. I don't think he's a pedophile, but he is so goddamn reckless. I am not sleeping. I have had panic attacks over this. Defending him has resulted in all the 2022 Kiwi Farms misinfo resurfacing. Dick Thulu says, this is the correct take. I'm very sorry you're going through all this bullshit again. It's his fault. He's so fucking careless because he didn't consider how many communities are close to him. He hurt me and a lot of people by literally being a fucking weirdo. Go watch porn on your phone, retard. Jerking off at your work computer? Um, someone asked, wasn't this exasperated by Ethan Klein? Kufel says, you can't blame Klein. Vouch would do the same thing to a small creator he didn't like in an instant. This is the game. Um, like seriously, ask yourself how many mentally ill nobody's Vouch brought on debates because it was funny to exploit them. This is the industry. This is how it works. Do you think Vouch debated the Yankee tanky because he was a serious intellectual opponent? This isn't even a condemnation of Vouch. The entire industry is like this. Anything you could say about Vouch, he's done the same. And because of Vouch, I burned the last bridge I had to a mainstream creator. Reminder that Ethan Klein brought Keffels on to his podcast to call Keffels a hero for bringing down the Kiwi Farms. And then a year and a half later, Ethan Klein is using information directly sourced from the Kiwi Farms against Keffels and against Vouch. Um... Dark Nevin said, I've only been around since noodles, but my takeaway from all the debates with this pieces of shit was this is done. This is done to convince audiences of points, not the person being debated, which still feels weird because the opposite effect can happen just as easily. Uh, Keffel says incorrect. It's all done for entertainment. If we wanted to actually care, wanted you to actually care about politics, we'd all tell you to go outside. Uh, that is correct, actually. Uh, this is all bullshit and amounts to nothing. Everyone involved in this is a fucking retard, uh, a duplicitous two face fucking liar who doesn't care about anything besides getting super chats a uh, completely honest take uh from Keffels, to be quite honest with you um but i love the, this 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 line of like i don't think he's a pedophile i don't care if he watches lollycon i don't care if he watches horses fuck little girls i care that he got caught doing it while i was defending him that's Keffels. uh that's Keffels concern Oh, oh, shit, sad. Oh, tipster content, my favorite. Tipster is now becoming my favorite. He's just so fat and stupid and pathetic. It's great. Genuine LOL cow content, as they say. The issue here is... Sorry, I did not want to blast your ears with that much. That, like, when you're talking about, like, hentai and anime and stuff like that, the art style is so ambiguous that sometimes you could be looking at a character that looks like an adult character, and then you later find out it's not an adult character so it's not always like easy to tell if i could give you guys honest advice <laughs> when it comes to this kind of shit if you're into adult content stay the fuck away from hentai okay because you might see something that looks perfectly fine in hentai and then find out oh that's like a 16 year old girl well fuck that shit like just stay away from hentai if, it, if i can give you guys honest to god advice stay away from that shit okay because you're just you're asking for fucking trouble at that point dude poor tipster man he's jerked off so many times and then as his hand sticky with cum looks up with that fresh new perspective he says oh fuck that was a child just keeps happening to the poor guy <laughs> he keeps finding he had to swear off hentai as a whole now he just watches uh porn hub because that's the only way i mean there you know everyone there has been uh uh personally accredited by the one moderator who handles 100% of complaints on Pornhub that they're consenting adults. This is how that works. So he is completely and totally uh, guilt-free now with his masturbation. Like what's happening here is we have a lot of normies who aren't familiar with the debate space and they're getting their first glimpse of some of the crazy shit that happens in the debate space, especially in the early days of this space. They're starting to see this shit and they're like, holy fuck, what the fuck is going on? But like, if you've ever spent any time in this space, any significant amount of time, some of the shit, and I referenced this in my last stream, some of the shit that people debate or some of the arguments that people will use in a debate to back up their positions are like, really fucking insane okay i talked about the fact that in the past you know destiny has done debates about incest and destiny has done debates about 
using pragmatic CP to treat pedophiles through exposure therapy. Uh, there was the infamous dog fucker debate. Like some of the shit that people debate about is so bizarre. I even heard a debate one time, and I know some people in chat know which one I'm talking about. There was a debate one time where someone tried to argue that another person is a pedophile because they think that if your partner has a foot fetish and you go out in public barefooted where children may be present with your partner that has the foot fetish, then you're engaging in an act of pedophilia. Like it's so fucking weird, right? The debate bro space is like the most retarded thing that has ever existed. And I cannot believe that there's like tens of thousands of people who watch this shit. And it's just a team sport. Like nobody actually cares about the debate. <laughs> nobody actually cares about changing hearts and minds. It's literally like a freak show of retards. And then occasionally two people who argue. It's like a Pokemon, like Vouch and Destiny spend their time like publicly ritualistically humiliating level three like retarded pokemon until they're level like 90 and then they have a nice little fight with each other where it's more fair that's just how that works um i'll just let this play All right the other thing i want to do really quickly uh before i wrap up this segment is i do want to apologize to some of my friends who i care a lot about uh one of those friends being Keffles. Uh, when I tweeted the tweet with my criticism of H3, I did try to tweet it in a way that it wasn't aggressive uh, or I wasn't trying to be like crazy argumentative or whatever. I wanted to state my criticism, but I didn't want to be a dick about it. Okay. I tweeted that tweet. I went to bed and I woke up to utter fucking chaos because Ethan saw my tweet. Ethan didn't like my tweet and Ethan responded to my tweet. As a result of that, I was getting a barrage of fucking hate. People were very fucking mad. And several of my friends came to my defense as a result of that. One of those people being Keffels. And because of that, they got so much shit. And I just want to take a moment to apologize to my friends for that. When I posted that tweet, I did not mean for that to happen. And I am genuinely sorry that you guys got harassed and attacked because of my actions. I learned from this experience that I need to, before I do things, I need to better reflect on how my actions affect other people around me. And um, I'm sorry that happened. None of you guys deserve to be attacked in that way. And uh, I take full accountability for that. Um, the other thing is this whole experience has honestly ruined anime for me in general. I said it before, like hentai was never my thing, but this if you're is, into- This is a great part. This part right here is fucking gold. This guy, I want you to know if you watch anime and you, 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 uh, you go online and jerk off to your anime characters, this guy is jerking off with you. You guys are J.O. bro. Hentai, honestly, just stay together. the fuck away from that shit because holy fuck, like, you could look at something that looks perfectly fine and then later find out it's lolly and then you could find yourself in a situation like this. So this whole situation has honestly ruined anime for me so fucking much that I, I never want to watch anime again. I don't want anything to do with anime. I got my waist bin here and I got some of my anime. We got Death Note, one of my favorites. Fuck it, throw it in the bin. We got some Dragon Ball Z, another great anime show. Throw it in the fucking bin. Robotech seems pretty harmless, but who knows? Maybe there's some lolly in there. Throw it in the fucking bin. Ease, based on one of my favorite RPG franchises, in the fucking bin. Hell, I've got video games that are anime inspired. Those go in the bin too. Uh, Ease, the video game, gone. The Final Fantasy games, there's probably some lolly in there somewhere. Get rid of them. Uh, oh, Final Fantasy VII Remakes, gotta go. Uh, Catherine, pretty sure there might be something sussy in there. Let's get rid of it. And just for good measure, Ethan calls people he views as lollycons, he calls them lollipops. So we'll get rid of lollipop chainsaw, just to be on the fucking safe side. I'm so sick of anime at this point. I want nothing to fucking do with it. No more anime in my house. I'm sorry, babe. I know you're in the other room. I know you still like Pokemon and shit like that. No more. No mas. It's Jover. No more anime in this house. Fuck that shit.
what's really funny about this it's funny on multiple levels like number one this guy's like 40 years old and, and i just want to say him with really short hair is very funny because he's like so fat you can see bald spots in his hair like in his scalp as a result of his scalp being fat so the hair is thinner than it should be um but he's trying to make the point that anime has because of how and there was a guy spurking out about lolicon to the point where i had to ban him recently i think i mentioned this last stream but he was he used the word there's a specific word for it. it's like neonatal features but it's called like neotine features or something he was making the he's trying to make the point that japanese art uses neonatal features so much that it is in impossible for a average viewer to ascertain if any character is meant to be a child or not because the drawings are done in such a way that they all look like children and therefore if you're just jerking off to anime you can't tell if it's supposed to be a child or not because they all look like children and this is supposed to be an epic gotcha because it's trying to be like well anime is a good thing and i also love anime that's a not a direct quote i'm in interpreting tipster's point uh, so therefore, he's right. We have to forgive Vouch because any one of us could accidentally jerk off to Lollicon because it all looks like uh, it all looks like children. That's that's like the point he's trying to make. But he incidentally makes a point that I would make. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Japanese people are creepy fucks, and they draw every character like a child. They draw every character as like four foot tall, seventy pounds, with a child's face and body, and they act in this weird dopey way like a child and that is at least like half the characters in an anime every time um and then even like even i remember um i remember watching dragon ball z as a kid it was on fucking tanami it was a as you know the dub version of dragon ball z they put it on tanami and i remember that um there's a there's like a girl i think it's bulma who's like 13 in the show and then Master Roshi like digs through her panty drawers and she she's like a teenager and this guy's like 80 years old and that made it into like the the squeaky clean Cartoon Network dubbed version. So even like the most popular animes have weird creepy sex shit in it. And so it's I don't know. I feel like he's making my point trying to be sarcastic about making my point. But if you take it out of his face, it's, yeah, you're a little bit right. <laughs> just watch pokemon oh dude um brock oh my god brock like sexually harassing literally every single woman that he encounters and he's a pokemon breeder come on and uh what's his, misty's like 12 in that and he's like hitting on her too the entire time right oh well there's a point um there's another clip this clip is great this guy i don't know who chris the narc is but apparently he's in a um He's in a photo with Mudahar and Turkey Tom and some other guy. It might be him. Um, but he has this to say, and I, I love this this clip. Here, I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this. Back when I met Muda, months ago, if you don't remember the infamous photo of me, Turkey Tom, Keem, and Muda at Keem's house, um, I talked to Muda about Keffels. And Muda was already planning on looking into Keffels way before this. Way before this. A bunch of creators have been looking into Keffels. So, just didn't happen. A lot of people have been looking into Keffels ever since the 100000 dropped. Ever since that money was never allocated to the right locations. People have been looking. Large, large creators have been looking. Not just Muda. Muda brought it up to me in a one -on like a convo that we just had randomly. Right. And it was like, yeah, I was looking into that. I was potentially going to do a video on it. That is the extent of our combo. That is the extent of our combo. And it never happened. And it, I just let it go. And I was like, okay, whatever. And then he got wrapped up in the completionist stuff, the Mama Max stuff, everything else involving like larger projects, him and Carl working on the completionist. So it fell to the wayside. Keffels doesn't understand how many large creators have been looking into her bullshit. Her. She doesn't know. She doesn't realize 
that there is a whole group of people that are not Kiwi Farms looking into Catboy Ranch and the GoFundMe. Muda just said it as an offhand to me one time and to everybody else. Nobody thought it was going to happen. We were like, yeah, whatever. If it happens, it happens. Now it's happening. And Keffel's being like, well, I'm just low-hanging fruit to these people. No, 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 no. People have been trying to figure out what you did with that money for a while now. This isn't new. You, getting involved in the Voss situation, you put yourself on notice. You did that to yourself. And people were going to make these videos on you eventually. So, um, I have a feeling, and this is my bet, okay? This is my bet. I'm going to bet chat money on this one. I think Tipster's going to flip on Keffels. I think when the I think when that GoFundMe video goes out and the Catboy Ranch video goes out and all the proof and the evidence and everything comes out as a landslide, he's going to flip on Keffels. I'm going to bet money on it. I'll bet money that he'll flip. Yes, I know. It's unfair. It's unfair that the Kiwi Farms has been right for two years. I know it's very unfair that I've had to single-handedly deal with tons of problems that have seemed unsurmountable um, in the meantime. However, as much as it seems unfair that now uh, these people are going to jump in and try to make multi-million view videos off the back of the work that people did a year and a half ago, which would have helped a lot in the time in the time between. I still welcome it. the The machinations are working, and it, it's a it's a good thing because ultimately, holding a grudge against these people who stood by. I don't know if that would be in our best interest because it is true that all these people could have done more earlier to help um, and they chose not to. And now when it's politically exp uh, expedient and profitable and the world has changed such that, you know, doing an expose video on a heroic trans creator is actually um, the more lucrative thing to do. It's easier. I still welcome that. These are all good things in in the uh, in the end. Um, no, nah, I mean you don't have to like them. I'm just saying from my perspective, it is a good thing. And now, especially seeing the quartering and his publication just openly like cite the site and and name drop us, um, I like I like seeing that. Not just you know because it drives traffic or whatever. I like that because how do I explain this? When the site was having trouble, it gave the the impression that the site was teetering on the edge, and that is in a, in of itself encouraging. When there's all these problems and they're being pushed, even though they're being fixed and they're being fixed rapidly, the the successes in and of themselves give the impression that it's a winning fight and it is much easier to enlist people on a winning fight than a losing fight if you are the underdog people might root for you in silent but they're never going to stick their neck out for a gamble that they don't have odds to win you know which is why um now that the odds have changed people are willing to bet on you a little bit more when the site stays up and people link to the site and people talk about the site openly and openly agree with what the site is saying. It not just helps the site directly through the, you know, dr reminding people that it exists, sending back old users who have uh, thought the site went down, um, perhaps finding new users. It also creates the collective concept that the Kiwi Farms is a fixture. It is no longer this at-risk, endangered species on the brink of destruction at every passing week. It is a, a thing that has been up 
and has stayed up for over 10 years and uh, is probably not going away. And that in and of itself is a deterrent from people wanting to pick fights. It's one thing to pick a fight with a small website that could be knocked down by a strong breeze. It's another thing to pick a fight with like, for instance, 4chan. People, 4chan has been around for so long and has stayed the way that it is for so long that nobody would look at 4chan today and think, I'm gonna be the one that brings down 4chan because it is a, a fixture of not just the internet, but like collective consciousness online. And moving closer towards that reality is a passive benefit and deterrent in and of itself, which I appreciate. So, um, yes, it's better late than never, as as far as I'm concerned. If you want to hold, like, I don't know, there are some people who I think could have done more and didn't, and I may I may hold little grudges. Uh, but for the reasons I mentioned, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to endeavor. I'm going to make a personal conscious decision to get the fuck over it because um, ultimately that is the prudent thing to do. And there are people um, who have been trying to help indirectly and who have succeeded in helping indirectly. Um, and that's why it pays not to piss everybody off all the time <laughs> you have to I, I still think that you have to be choosy like you can't make friends with everybody like if you try to make friends with ralph even like i know that i like to i'm i'm, I'm an idiot in some ways where it's like i, I try to be nice to ralph and bossman jack just because um <laughs> they endear themselves to me through their weird behaviors and chris for that instance and even like not being on negative terms with those people is a detriment to me. <laughs> I'm not comparing them all, you know, as, as equals. They're very different people, but in, in the terms that associating with them or, or even like deliberate, like trying to give them the benefit of a doubt is often a bad decision. Um, my, my, what I'm trying to say is that when you, it, it does you have to be choosy with your friends but at the same time it benefits you to have some friends at some times chat trying to say you know hopefully hopefully that makes sense pick your words off the ground no 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 i i this, this is the issue that when you live stream you have to like think on the fly and i'm i'm a pooster i'm used to posting so I'm used to sitting down and, and writing up five paragraphs and then completely deleting it and starting over and reorganizing thoughts and shit. And it's hard to, you can see me in real time, like backspace and re reconstruct entire paragraphs on the fly. <laughs> uh, such is life. You can pick your nose, you can pick your friends, you can't pick your pronouns. That's true. That's very true. Uh, so that, oh, Sydney Watson, Sydney Watson was the name that I was thinking of who, uh, runs the publica with Hamley. Watson is not a ham related name. So Sydney needs to change. I don't know if that's a woman or uh, Sydney sounds like a female name. Let me look before I make an ass of myself. Publica. Let's see. There are no pictures of her on her profile. Yeah, it is a woman. Okay, that's what I thought. So she needs to change her name to something ham-related. Simply Porkson. Simply, I mean, Hampson is a good name. That doesn't even sound odd. Sydney Hampson. All right, maybe you could go for a more British one, like Hampshire or something. It still has ham in it, so it counts. Anyways. <laughs> um... Is that I already read that? Oh, okay. So this happened just today. Keffels has Keffels ran two discords. Uh, he ran the Keffel Cord, which was like a public, like open community Discord server, and then he ran runs the Catboy Ranch, which is private invite only. So, the public Keffels Discord server is being deleted. 
Um, this person has gone to great lengths to archive the entire Discord for the Kiwi Farms, but he's deleting the all the the public Discord, and he's moving all the um, integrations and stuff to Catboy Ranch. So Catboy Ranch is still there. It still operates. It's invite only. Cloak and dagger. Only Keffels and Keffels' friends are um are allowed inside, and that's where he's hiding now. So he's been bullied off Twitter. He even got, I don't have this lined up um, directly, but Keffels was getting, like, Keffels um, quit Twitter and then moved to Blue Sky, which is Jack Dorsey's new gay dating website. And uh, I guess he just thought that being on Blue Sky would immunize him from any kind of criticism. But even the trannies on Blue Sky are like, bro, you're sending dirty estrogen vials to to kids. We don't want you here. You're you're an active detriment to our cause. You make us look like gross weirdos. And he was crying about that on Blue Sky, getting bullied uh, to the point where um, Brianna Wu had to step in and help Keffels make a block list. Uh, so they're already like getting set. They're trying to get set in on Blue Sky, but like the fun of Twitter was that they could inflict their bullshit thoughts on other people who don't agree with them. What's the point of being in like an isolated hug box where everyone already agrees with you all the time anyways? Like that doesn't, that's not as exciting. The whole point of being a tranny is being able to force people to listen to your, your gay bullshit, you know, and shooting their kids up with estrogen. Uh, so I'm, uh, he's, he's kind of dipping his toes back into Twitter, so he might end up on Twitter again in the future. We'll find out. We'll see in, in, in a little bit. Um, but there's one more thing with this, and that is... Oh, this, see, this, this is just the kind of lies that Keffels makes constantly. Just constantly. And no, There's nobody ever there to just like call him out on this gay bullshit that he does continuously. Uh, he says... It's incredibly fucked up. When I was thwatted, the thwatter mentioned Catboy Ranch and giving children Catboy collars in the email where they impersonated me and said they were going to shoot up City Hall. It was all Kiwi Farms misinfo. Now H3H3 fans are regurgitating it. Number one, there are pictures, there are tweets from Twitter accounts that Keffels admits, Keffels ran, that showed him sending Tag, specifically tagged collars. It had usernames on it to people. And we could find people that Keffels interacted with in public who were under 18 and were doing the femboy tummy shit. Like we have all of this. It's not misinfo. It's you posted it on Twitter in public. It's not, it's not a stretch of the imagination. It was not something that had to be invented from, you know, wholesale from, from nothing to be published. It, you, you made it. But then what's really weird is that when I read this, my immediate thought was, we have that email. Uh, Keffels posted that email somewhere, and it did not mention that collar. I know this. I, I remember this very vividly because I was involved. I don't know if you remember this, but I was actually involved uh, in the fallout of all this bullshit. And I was thinking, uh, surely this can be debunked. But sure enough, Dynasty knew exactly where this archive was, and I can show that this is bullshit. So this is Keffels. Posting the email, the email that got me swatted was finally obtained. And this is the email. I have this is so this is pretending to be Keffels apparently and was sent to a bunch of different people, including uh, members of parliament in Canada. I've had enough of you anti transgenders being in positions of power and oppressing us. You finally broke me, you cisgendered transphobic a holes. When this is over, the, this entire city will remember my name. I have killed my transphobic mo mother today. I, oh, and today I will be going out to City Hall and shooting every cisgender person I see with a gun I illegally acquired. So, no, we have from the news, directly from the police, the email that was sent to trigger the police investigation. And nowhere does it mention the Catboy collar. So, when Keffels says that it mentions the Catboy Ranch and giving Catboy collars an email, I can prove, I can literally, demonstrably, factually prove in a way that is undeniable to everybody that that is a fucking lie. And Keffels has no issue making lies like that all the fucking time, which is why everyone hates him. This is why Keffels has not a single real friend in the entire world, even poor tipster who gave up anime for his queen. 
will one day stab Caffles in the back when the the expose videos come out and then he'll be like, oh, I didn't know any of this. Oh my God, I thought it was just Kiwi Farms misinfo. Like he fucking knows, but he, he's, he won't admit it until it becomes uh, undeniable for him. And then he'll try to save his own ass, but I can just prove. So this is the the fake farts, uh, Queen Kafals, and he's hiding out on on Blue Sky now in his super secret Discord. He's kind of he's kind of got that um, Shaun of the Dead mentality. So here's what we'll do: we'll go to the Catboy Ranch. We'll watch some we'll watch some uh, some Twitch debates. We'll ca- crack open a cold HRT, and we'll wait for this whole thing to blow over. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's hoping for we'll just wait for this whole thing to blow blow over and i don't know if it will um because ignore him he'll go away bro i don't want him i don't want him to go away i want keffels to continue to parade around in public being a laughing stock to everybody because you cannot ask you literally cannot ask for a better representation of the transgender community in a negative way and then Keffels, he's every single thing that every single person on this planet fucking hates, and he is a active detriment to his cause. I want Keffels to, to loudly and proudly stay around, say all the dumb shit that he wants to say forever and ever, amen, and actively make things worse for other trannies uh, until this until this whole thing blows over, to be quite honest with you. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.